Okay, storytelling Ron here. This is uh, Storm King's Thunder DM Tips 2.0. I think I'm a little better at speaking on YouTube, so let's just get started. I definitely just want to get into it. Um, this is basically, I'm going to cover a little bit of what I did in the first one, first video, and then um, and then talk about uh, what I'm doing 2.0-y, you know, as I'm prog progressing through the story with the, with my, with the party. Okay, so this is the the basic concept of Storm, Storm King's Thunder, how uh, the story is, right? You start off with um, the Great Upheaval, which is the Night Stone, the stone, the cloud giants, you know, do the stone thing. The characters then come come to the Night Stone and see the ruins, and of course, then they get caught up in um, the Zentarum, the orcs and elves, and you know, kind of a chaotic thing. And I, I you know, I I just didn't that just didn't that didn't thrill me. So I wasn't into that. And then after that, they go rescue the people out of the goblin, you know, dripping caves. And then um, and then then the cloud giant comes down, the wizardy Zephorus or whatever comes down and talks to them. And fate says that, you know, he leads them to the next thing, which, you know, I'm not into that. So uh, personally. So then after that, you you pick a, a, a town to go help defend against giants. And so you only pick one. So you don't even get to do all three, and of course, in mine, I'm gonna I'm gonna have them do all three, and then uh, and then after that, you get quests, and these quests are all very random by the different NPCs that you are involved with, whichever town you choose, and they're very the the quests are very thin, like the the you know you as the DM have to fill up fill that in, you know, all the little, you know, and then the Savage Frontier is basically what twenty pages of info about the whole area, different spots, and what you know they might be going to. But again, none of that is really fleshed out. You know, it's just kind of a couple of paragraphs of information. So that's a little, you know, disappointing. Um, and then, you, of course, you go to the Chosen Path, which is a secret place where the Eye of the All-Father, where the giants are all sort of supposed to be connected together and, um, you know, whatever that is. Um, and then you get to choose, and you're supposed to go find the conches. And, and then in that Chosen Path, like, you know, it's like traps and like Tomb of Horrors-y in a sense, you know, a little bit. Um, then you got to do certain things to get in and the statues. And I just, I'm not into that personally. So, um, and why there's this, this uh, Eye of the All-Father, I don't know. Whatever. Um, not into that. So, and then of course, at level eight, you're supposed to then pick one. You could pick a couple, but, oh, and after you do the Eye of the Father, you got to go back to the Savage Frontier, go to the different barbarian runes, get the shards or whatever, and then come back to the Eye of the Fall Father then you get to choose which ones you're going to go to and you get the conjure or teleport. I don't know why that, or you got to go there. And then, so then you only get to pick one of these technically. And then you, of course you go to the storm giants and find out more of the story. And, and of course, each of these is supposed to give you more. The chosen path is supposed to give you the, you're supposed to be able to ask questions to the div, div, whatever voice is there. And, and then they give you the, you know, give you the solve, help you solve the riddle. So I'm not, I'm not really into that. I'm not into that as well. So, yeah, a lot of problems with this one, but a, plenty of good piece, piece, pieces in this puzzle to, to then use. Then, of course, you once you figure out all that, you get your conch from one of these and you teleport to the Storm Giants, and then that's it. I mean, well, that's kind of it as far as fighting goes. And then in the Storm Giants, you're really supposed to just role play um, in intrigue, you know, and find out what's going on. And then, of course, you, you're you supposed to um, go rescue the King Storm Giant from the Tentacles and the Kraken Society thing, and then go to... The finale, which is Doom of the Desert, and, fill, and kill the blue dragon, Imra. So, in, in Storm King's Thunder, which is a giant campaign, you're, you might fight one giant here, and one giant here, and that's it. And, you know, I, okay, so, not I'm not doing that. I'm taking out a bunch of the stuff that I don't like. And you as a DM should do that. You, when you get these campaign books, own it. You own, do If you think, well, this is really hard... And you're not feeling it? Take it out. Take it out. Not a, you're you're the dungeon master. You decide what you want to do. So what I'm going to do is, and I've said this in the other one, but I'm trying to be quick because I'm going to focus on the later stuff in this video. But so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to just go right into. Let me show you on the map. I'm going to have them. In other words, they're going to go through all these sieges. They're going to go through all the giants, and then this, and then this. So I'm taking out the chosen path. I'm taking out the savage frontier. I'm taking out the rumblings and all this and all this up, up, up beginning stuff doesn't don't need it don't need it all right let me get to the map which is here so i do have on here um there's groothog which is the hill giant layer 
So look at this whole area, and there's golden fields where they're gonna they're gonna siege. So this is very fascinating. Now this is where Nightstone is, which is the original story. But I don't want to do that. I'm gonna start. I started them off in Waterdeep. They heard rumblings of hill gi of giants attacking the farmers and the land. That's all you need as far as um, a motivation. Mo that's it. The fear of the farmers and the peasants, the suffering of the downtrodden. Okay, that immediately gets your players like, we gotta rescue, we gotta help, we gotta do something. Th that, it's that simple. Do that. So everyone is in fear. There's a uh, refugees in water deep, you know, um, fleeing the, the 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 you know the the giants. So they decide to go up north for a road, and then they go to Golden Fields. I'm just I'm going to quickly go through all this. They had a bunch of adventures on North for Roads in their first level, and you know they they were helping a merchant go along, uh, fun stuff. And and then uh, and I do other videos on that the de more detailed. And then they go to Golden Fields, and there's a big and then that's when this, I have, they you know the impending siege, and they they help Golden Fields, and that was a fun many episodes of them. Uh, adventuring and I introduced another character because and I started them off in here and they came back to Golden Mills, whatever um, And then of course they went up to Groot Haug and just and you know fought that and that was cool And I'll show you a little bit of that in a minute now after they after they defeated them the look right over here stone giants boom Can you see on the map? Yeah, okay. Let me move it up a little so we can see everything Okay, so Groot Haug now you look stone giants right there. So and oral bar and Lork have been uh, destroyed, right? So Loudwater Loudwater is like the perfect mid-level city to go uh, adventure in. So I, I was like, yeah, these are because it was an old elven dwarven place, and now it's run by Zentarum humans. But there's going to be a lot of magic in there and stuff. And um, so I knew Loudwater was going to hear about the successes at Groothaug, and they're celebrating at Golden Fields. And so they brought a, 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 an ambassador or whatever, or, uh, one of the town guard uh, captains came to recruit the team and say, we have an issue up here in Loudwater. And if you think about it, this is only like a week's journey, you know, on horseback. So I just, that, that to me, that's, and I shortened the time because it's not a big deal. And I, when I travel, I just, just get there. You know, I mean, I don't do everyday encounters and, you know, it just, let's just keep with the fun. There's plenty of adventure and challenges um, without having to do random, you know, stuff. And I had him go through quickly, like through each of these, and I just described them quickly and we got to Loudwater okay and they went up they, they dealt with some pretty fun I'll, I'll go to that in, in, later in this video about Loudwater I'll go in more detail about this this part now um, but they go to Loudwater and they go to they go to Aurobar and you know see the destruction see the lone giant and they go to, to stone giants and now they're in the stone giant area so that's as far as we got but but get what I'm doing I'm go, I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm building up and they're and they're learning through they're learning the story through the bosses, like this, with Groot Haug, you know, first they learned about Groot Haug and Gru. I called her Gru because she grew. That's what all the goblins called her. So they learned about Gru, uh, not her, her original name is Goo. I, I did Gru. I, by accident, I'm not a genius, but it sounded so cool that I just started using it. Um, so the goblins were, you know, the goblins were building up this b boss, this hill giant boss, and they're getting all anxious about that. Ooh, there's, you know, there's a, there's a plot behind this. And then, and then when they get to Loudwater, or when they get to, um, you know, they and to Earl Bar or whatever, they learn of the Stone Giant place. And in the Stone Giant place, they, they have just recently defeated uh, the uh, Kaya Lithica, the Thane Kaya Lithica, the Stone Giant boss, Hill, uh, Stone Giant boss. And so she gave them some stuff. And then when they did the stalactite, you know, um, that gave them some clues. And I and I and it said like in the in the campaign. You write something, and then the next full moon, you'll get an answer. Come on. You know what I mean? Just, I, got, I gave him the answers right then and there. I'm not going to do some weird, I don't, I don't know who does that. Who waits, who, who writes a campaign where you write something, and then you got to wait a month to get the answer? I mean, that's not role, that's not D&D. &D. Take time out of it. Don't let time ruin the game, you know, and, and ruin the pace. Just, you know, in Lord of the Rings, the movies, they don't, they're not going to deal with that much time. Just get it going. Um, get them at the, get them to coming at the right time. Anyway, so what I'm getting at is that um, I get I guess just explaining this. Okay, so that's that. Now I want to go through real quickly how uh, um, and then of course the the frost giants. Now now how do I get from okay here? How do I get from the stone giants all to the frost giants? Which are way over here in Svardborg, right? See that? Okay, very easily. Um, first off, 
Parnas. Now, I don't put, I don't involve Parnas in the story, but this is what gave me the idea. They're a dragon worshiping cult there from the other. Um, I think it's explained in this one, just like in a paragraph, but it's obviously in the other uh, campaign, the the, the 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 dragon one. But um, and also here's a weird thing too. Um, there's in the in the Storm King's Thunder, right? The airship comes down, made by Cloud, and that's supposed to come down at a certain time. I don't remember where, or what, in what area. But I'm like, see, I'm going to use that here. I'm going to use that here. So when they finish with Stone Giants and they come back to Loudwater or somewhere in there, uh, and my players, please, you're not watching this. Okay. They're, the airship's going to come down. Well, no, I'm, I'm sorry. Take that back. Clouth is going to come down. So Clouth, Clouth, and look, there's a, Clouth and Vale is right here. He has an obvious motivation to get rid of those Frost Giants or to weaken them or, you know, Whatever, and he doesn't want to direct, um, directly confront them because because he doesn't want to start a giant dragon war. So he wants to do it, you know, through proxies, through heroes. So kind of in a secret way. So he gets the air. Sh he, he, I have Cloud flying over them right now. So I like that premonition. Like they know there's a giant as they were traveling along. They know there was a giant ancient red dragon flying around way up high. So he's watching them, and I wanted them to know that, you know. So that's the way you build up story too. Is that they're. So the characters are feeling this greater story behind the giants, and they're and it's giving them a freakiness, you know, and that's what's cool about um, doing that. So you, you know, you need to prepare those kind of things ahead of time, and, and then and bring them in bit by bit. So he's flying over them, and as they return, I'm going to have him land and boom, and he's going to talk to them and tell you know, um, I don't have a script or anything. I'm just going to play it as I go. But my goal, you got to think about it. What does Cloth want? Cloth wants them to go up. Get, take an airship, make a deal with them. Take an airship, go up, deal with the frost giants, and he'll promise them some crap or whatever. So there's that. Okay. So then they get the they're gonna. I'm I'm based on their play now. They're gonna go back. I'm assuming they're gonna go back to L, L Loudwater because they need to get some more information. And then and then he's gonna fly them up with the airship. Um, he's gonna you know make the deal with them and then he's gonna just leave. But the airship, he'll have his cult members you know bring the airship and and deliver them up to Bryn Shander. And they know about Bryn Shander already because they got the conch from the uh, stone giant. Oh, by the way, the conch is to me, every every boss has a conch, and this is what's cool about this. <laughs> it's an, I got one, so it's kind of a cool prop. But every um, um, every conch, um, or conch, whatever, every con I, call it, I call them conches, but every conch is, um, it's not a teleporting device. I think that's retarded. I want them to travel um, just for the fun of it. And... Um, they're 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 mobile like they're, they're smartphones they're mobile phones and the storm king thunder is the only one or king hegaton is the only one that really knows how to operate them so he's the one he was keeping them all in control using a phone you know telling him you can't just and he's listening in on them as well like a like a siri or a whatever alexa so um so that's what they're discovering and it was so cool when they went to the hill giants and they found this conch and they're like what it's all dirty and i made the grooves all dirty and disgusting then when they get to the when they went to the stone giants and then pulled out a conch they're like whoa what the heck can they both have one you know uh that was so cool and um and so they're they're, they're listening in and they can hear voices you know and i roll have them roll like arcana and or perception whatever i let them roll whichever one's higher and that's another thing about it, I, as a dm be, just be cool about things you know just let them roll i give out inspirations quite a bit and they've there's been every almost every fight they've had a, a death save type of scenario, so I'm not that you know. So I still make it hard on them, but anyway. So um, so they got one from the Stone Giant now. And now they're like whoa, and then la and the last thing they hear now is we'll we'll attack Bryn Shander, you know, the Frost Giant. So they know they got to go to Bryn Shander next, but it's, I'm going to tie in the 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 red you know Clouthan, the Red Dragon's going to say I want you to go and deal with the Frost Giant. So they know they got the Frost Giant, and they're learning about the Ordnung now, and they're learning or they knew about it, but they now know it's shattered. And you know they got to deal with all these all these giants, you know. So they're going to be going to Bryn Shander next. Uh, now, after that, Frost is the fire giants, right? Which is right across here. How am I going to have that happen? I think what I'm going to do is the dwarves, right? There's a bunch of dwarves: the Gauntlet Grim, Mirabar, Mithril Hall, uh, Citadel Felbar. I mean, there's a Citadel Adbar. There's a ton of dwarves up here. So, and they get the, remember, they get the thing stolen. So, they're going to obviously hear about these guys fighting giants. And they know the fire giants are going to get it. They know that. So, I'm going to I'm gonna have a visa that they know that they're going to get it. And they lost track of um, where it is. So, I'm going to have the dwarves definitely um, seek to hire them 
to to now and they're going to have them travel over and I'm, i feel like i'm going to have them already know where iron slag is and they and then they know that they can travel along but they've heard through the the, the next conch that they get from the frost giants that the um that the, the the fire giants are going to attack and i'm not going to do tribor tribor is where in the in the campaign uh they 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 siege but i don't why would they go way down here i don't you know I just whatever. I don't feel like I'm gonna keep it close to the the fire giants and have it be either New Fort or Dead Snow because both of these places are kind of small. I read through them; they're kind of just small little villages. And this is an interesting area because Sundabar is a destroyed dwarven place, and there's just dwarves living underground and hidden. Jalanthar is like a fishing village. Everland and Silver Moon are both really big towns, and they're magical and all that. So that's gonna be interesting. I don't, you know, how I'm gonna flesh those out. Um, and Hawk's Nest is where they raise hippogriffs, so that's kind of interesting. And there's Citadel Felbar and Citadel Al Adabar. Both are uh, dwarven places. I'm probably just going to have them go to one, either Mithril Hall, Citadel Felbar, or Citadel Adabar. Not, not all three. And um, I might have them just go to Mithril Hall and meet the dwarves there, and then them tell them what, you know, what's going on over here and, and to go to Iron Slog. But they know in the conch that they're going to uh, siege one of these towns. So um, I'm going to do that. And then and I don't like the yaks or whatever they're called that are here. Like the, um, so I haven't yet decided on what I'm going to do with them. I'm gonna, I might just keep them the way they are, but I definitely am going to reveal them as evil. I don't like the way they, they can, can, you know, pretend they're nice and then they sleep with you and they possess you. <laughs> I don't like that whole thing. But anyway, but there's that. So after that, um, the cloud giants are right over here in Evermore, and I'm going to definitely do premonition on that. Premon I think that's the word premonition where they'll see them floating up their castle floating and then i'm going to bring in zephor too that's where i'll bring in zephor um and i think after that i think i might include nightstone in that i might actually you know i, I don't mind them flying over here to nightstone to besiege it and then maybe the characters want to help and maybe they're with zephor and they're on, on a race you know they're going to have the conch so they know that the cloud giants are going to go besiege nightstone i'm thinking i haven't fully thought that one out yet if i want to do that or just have them just encounter them up here the evermores you know above the above the swamp um but obviously having the cloud giants have a purpose of their own to try to find different whatever artifacts is, is is intriguing but but so there so there they i know they can get to them through zephor zephor is kind of funny silly I, you know i don't mind using them for this part and dealing with the cloud giants and i feel like it's going to be more role-playing than action but whatever um and then after that they're going to get the conch and then that conch will lead them directly and then i'm going to make the clown giants maybe take them to the storm giants you know which is i guess out here yeah maelstrom or whatever and that's where the storm giants are so there's how i'm going to do it um now let me show you i want to show you um da, 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 let me i want to show you now how i do some tasks you know this is this is sort of the info what i did um, I like to create my own magic tables and items. I just, I'm really, I don't really particularly care for most of the magic items in, in the DM's Guild, or the DM's Guild, D Dungeon Master's book. I just kind of like them a little simpler. It's just my preference. And I also, it's just kind of my fun little thing. I, I have them do an investigate, and if they do well, I just kind of pick a number like, a high number like 20, 21, 22, and it's whatever area, that whatever giant, whatever, whatever. And then I just give them, let them roll. And they kind of, all right, roll for how many, you know, if you roll five or six, you get two rolls. Ooh. Then I have them roll this. Then I have them roll, uh, this is just the value of items. Now, what I also do is I like to, um, instead of describing every little item they get, I just say it's a merchant item. And merchant items can be worth, um, you know, 10 to 100 gold. Noble items can be worth 100 to 1,000 gold, and lordly is 1,000 to 10,000, which I try to get a few of those. And legendary is like a crown. But, you know, merchant items is like candelabras or vases or whatever, or jewelry, you know. So they all get that, and I just, I'd rather do it that way than deal with, and let them get, you know, then, then describe everything, and then have they have to write it down. I just don't want to deal with that. Just my own thing. Uh, okay, so there's that, that's kind of my... Thing. And then this is the beginning part. I had a little village, and and I like to. I'll show you all, all as well. I like to, you know, create a little price chart of this specific area and what they do. Um, those are the original characters. There's another area that I did. My little doodles, little maps. Um, but I want to get to this town. 
It's at the, come on, come on, come on. Okay, the Golden Fields. I already kind of described Golden Fields quite a bit in the original. And I did this, but I never played it because I just felt like it was too much of a, um, too much of a other story. I didn't want to, I didn't want to go there with them. I could probably use this for something else though, which would be kind of cool. Um, okay, this is all right. So here's Loudwater. This is the where the town they go to. Um, I drew this out, but this is the town they go to for Stone Giants. And this, and I took out the I didn't. It's not that I took out the fish thing because they have a thing where the fish jump up and then the you know it's kind of an interesting little quirkiness about the town. But I just didn't worry about that. They, the, the the loud water is is they have rivers running through their um, city and waterfalls. So what I do, what I like to do now for towns is instead of you know really like naming out every building or whatever, I kind of name out the areas or. Or what, what are some important things that I think that they might want to go see or do? And in this one, they only went to... They went to Crafters Hill, Artisan's Guild, and they went to Sylvanas Temple. That was important. And they went to Horde, High Lord's Hall, and that was that's all they did. They didn't do any of the other stuff, which is, you know, fine. But also, and I, uh, I create my... I, for towns, you know, I like to create what I know they want or will need. You know, so I make it just... Because we... You know, I don't want to make it confusing enough for them. I just want to get to the important things and then move on. And get the story going. So, you know, they needed... One guy wanted an armor, so I was going to, boom, put some stuff down for him to buy. Um, and I kind of keep it simple and do a little extra, you know, a couple little things or whatever. Uh, one guy, you know, has leather, so they bought some leather stuff. Um, an apothecary for, you know, her herbs. A uh, magic shop for the wizard. and Because she was, you know, you need, need to show her, you know, like a candy store. Need to get her... She's kind of a new player. Wanted to get her to, ooh, I can buy all the stuff. Uh, the Fletcher for arrows, and then the Sil Sil Sylvanas Temple was for Amantha. Now Amantha is, um, if you've seen the video, especially episode twenty, that's the story reveal for her, and, and and Sam plays this character. But Amantha, the Sylvanas Temple is the story is just still not done yet because they're going to return to Loudwater after. But they they came, went to Stone Giants, and then are returning, and they're the ones going to do some story reveal for her because so Amantha. Um, she thought her patron was a fiend and the fiend never ex because she was so low the way I played it was she's so low level the, the fiend or her patron doesn't care who she is she's just a minion you know to get wasted but now that she's accomplishing things and getting up higher levels of, you know and directly contacted him he revealed himself to her and the fiend is not a fiend he's the deep he's Slark Slark Rethel which is the, the guy the kraken that is causing all this stuff so I made that reveal and that was a cool reveal in episode 20. And um, so it's actually the deep one that's her fiend or, fiend, or patron, not a fiend or whatever. So she's freaking out. And he told her in, la in episode 20, which is, you got to watch this. Um, and I've been waiting for this reveal that um, she has to join in his plot, which is to get these giants to cause havoc amongst men. And so he could, his Kraken society can gain power and and uh, he can become a god or whatever. You know, he can... You know do his thing um and he wants also for her to kill murder her party <laughs> so that was uh pretty wicked but i have a solution you know solve for this and she'll learn some of it from the savannah's temple hopefully basically just simplify and tell you the solution and he if he's watching this or any of the people in my um please don't ruin this for yours for all of you but the, uh, there is a simple solution she, all she needs to do uh, and I have the solution, and she'll find out about it soon enough. But at least I've stressed her out, and the party's all. And by the way, I don't like to put, I don't like to separate pe uh, players out and tell them something, you know, so the other players don't hear. I don't like to do that because they all know something's going on, and then it's kind of like watching a movie. What if you're watching a movie, and then at a certain point you have to leave the room while the movie's still playing, and when you come back, you don't know what happened. I don't like that. So I like that everyone knows what's going on, but you have to play that you don't know what's going on. That way, everyone kind of is enjoying and, oh, okay, you know, it's part of the story. But they also know they got to act their own, you know, their role. And they cannot act on that. I prefer that because it's more relaxing and you still you still have to role play. So you still have to role play. And I just I prefer that way. I don't like to, I don't like to keep secrets from, from the players. But they should understand that as they're, when they play their character, they need to know that there's secrets. Um it's just more i felt i find that more fun um <clears throat> personally unless you want to be like a dark grittier you know if you you know 
if the purpose is to make a dark, grittier, scarier, freakier, de- you know, session with gr- more grimness, that's fine. Then you, you maybe want to separate them out. But I personally like it a little lighter, a little more fun. But the solution is all she has to do is find something ancient, like an ancient um, dragon pe- scale, cover her heart because the oh sorry. The, the Slarkrothel has a tentacle wrapped around her heart, as he does all his minions. You know, like just like the guy, the Grand Dame, and if, uh, you know, that's how they die. They, they he, he crushes their heart with the little tentacle. It's just like a, I envision it as part of her flesh is formed around and has become this scarred tentacle, and he can, tr- can just do that with it and crushes the heart. Um, so he's done that. He does that to all his minions, but she all she has to do is cover her her chest with like a sh- dragon scale an ancient red dragon cloud or i don't know if she finds something else um to cover her her heart and then so slark cannot see it cannot target it he, she still gets the she's still it's still her patron but he just it just clouds him so that he doesn't see it and remember to me slark doesn't see everything he's not aware of everything like we are consciously aware of stuff he's more everything is sort of gray to him and he's just pushing out his evil onto these minions so even if one does cover herself you know with the protection he doesn't notice that because he's you know he's like the bigger picture you know evilness and and so he just doesn't i'm, I'm that's the way I'm, I'm i'm envisioning him so that's the way she, she can protect herself um but still be he's still her patron but she, she can ignore his orders if she cover protects her heart and he just he just doesn't he's not aware of her now. He's still you know his his powers still go to her, but he's just not aware of her. He's just doing his a thing, and then, so that's the way I, I envision that. Okay, so that's Loudwater, and just just showing you how I kind of set up a temple, and I and I've got over here the info of the different uh, leaders and what they're gonna tell you know um, who who's doing who's what. You know I, I took it out of the book, and I also looked on um, like a Forgotten Realms wiki. For some names and some info on the, on the town as well. And this is the Lord Kiznos. He's part of the town guard, the, the sort of the darker, richer, noble, elite one. Yeah, and then that's there's something bad going to happen. I'm going to have them ambush the party after they finish Stone Giants. You guys better not be watching this. Um, that's going to be fun. And I love, too, like I mentioned it before, but there's a lot of dragons in and young ones, too, in Storm King's Thunder that they encounter, which is kind of fun. Um um, there's there's even more than I thought of when I, as I'm reading it through and discovering them, but um, that's kind of cool. So then this here's the stone giant. Yeah, they did all that. Now here's my I just so you can see, I I I usually try to put it. This is by the way in design. In case you're wondering, Adobe in design. It's kind of expensive, but I just love using it because I can move stuff around very easily and you know text. And it, you know I used to use Microsoft Word and all that, but every time I put a picture in or text, you know it gets all ah. Anyway, so I just like to, so I made the gladiators, um, you know, this is my gladiator sheet, and I, I changed the, the priest. I didn't like the priestess one that's in there, and I just did my own. Um, here's a rock. I put a, a crystal ball of divination, because I knew the wizard one is a div- diviner, so that was kind of, I give her a magic item specific to her. Um, so what I'm doing, too, also, oh, you can't really see it. Um, let me move here i know they got some cooking kits and apothecary kits and there's a mushroom room in the stone giants area which is here i'm also taking out some creatures too i'm taking out the black puddings i'm gonna leave the rope in there but i took out the black puddings just because i there's enough fighting and stuff i i kind of it's been brutal they've been six days now six sessions they've been in here even though it's pretty small i don't know i'm really slow at the combat or something um but they haven't encountered the priest yet. But um, so the, the the mushrooms and stuff is they can, if they can harvest this, they're going to get some cool little whatever things going on here, some potions or cook, cooking stuff. They get um, so I just do that. You know, it makes it more fun. Different things that they can <coughs> uh, cook herbalism things. And I like to if, if 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 they cook a good meal, you get like bless kind of like a blessing or like a plus like plus one times three times. You can use it for the next two. You know day or whatever a little or whatever or an inspiration point or whatever i don't know i just do like to do little things like that um this is just me throwing together some kraken society kind of you know possible things you know i got that from one of the books so i got one of the whatever uh there's clouthin i just typed that all out or copied it okay so here's the final thing i gotta talk about here is how i set up my towns and i'm 
uh, when they get to Bryn Shander. So Bryn Shander, I'm a little disappointed in the one in the, in the Storm King's Thunder, like the, the, the different locations. Like, like for instance, there's a, a, a blacksmith or armor, and his stuff's all cheap and shoddy material. Why would anyone want to go there then? Why would the player characters want to go there? I, I feel like the, the locations they put in there were totally useless and not something any character even cares to go to. The, you know, And the um, they had some other locations outside of Bridge Shander they could go to, but I'm like, why? I, I just like, why do that when you got this incredible map you can use? And I found one, this on the internet where it doesn't have any of the names or whatever. I don't know where. I probably should have bought it from the guy, but... Um, but this is a great map and I, I want to stay here. I don't want to, you know, let them, I want look at that. You can literally put your little miniatures on this and kind of roll, you know, adventure through. Um, so I'm going to one and I, so there's another location where you can encounter a lot of this stuff you can see here, but I decided, you know, what, I'm going to put this all in Bryn Shander so that they have a kind of a fun town adventure here. It's all snowy. So for you know, and then these are these are described in the mining location nearby, but outside of Enchanter. I don't remember the name of it, but you know. So I just took all that out and moved it over here, and then and kind of, kind of um, collated it and, and figured out what I wanted this to feel like. So basically, what I got going on is there's the the, the deep one, Sam Hale. There's a church here, and that one, or temple or whatever is going to be and i just looked around the map and said oh yeah so this is going to be where the kraken society is kind of forming a you know their little cult and trying to sort of take over the town and the dwarves are in this area and they do not like this so they're annoyed and guarding this area quite a bit and there's like riots and stuff going on over here and problems and there's the market which will be kind of i'll probably just have them play through that real quickly lord's alliance is over here this play look, i just looked at the drawings and said, look this looks like a lord's alliance so that's going to be a place where the wizard could want to visit because she she's part of Lord's Alliance or wants to be. And they could tell him about the town and what's going on. The House of the Triad is here. I forget what that is. Uh, da, da, da. Well, I don't know. Whatever all the different groups. I'll have to look at that later. But whatever. The tax collector officiates. The sheriff is here. So that they'll probably want to talk to them about, you know, there's a siege coming, blah, blah, blah. Because they know. The Forge Masters is right there. See all this? Let me zoom back in. And this is like a fireplace. So I'm going to have um, the, the one of the clerics is a fire, you know, dude, uh, Raziak. Raziak. So, you know, he can go there and experience some stuff. I think he can get some items there or something maybe. Uh, what I'm going to have fun here is uh, high, I'm going to have a high-level thief watch out area. And there's like a thieves guild. And they tend to steal from the, uh, you know, bumbling mindless wizards that come through. So they're going to try to do that to uh, their party. And I haven't fully figured it out, but I think... I'm going to have them, you know, run away, and if they catch them, then they're going to have a little standoff and fight. I'll make it kind of small, a minor, minor fun thing. Uh, the Wizards Academy is here. This whole area, I believe, is what I'm going to make the Wizards Academy, because it looks kind of like, you know, a little university for them. And this looks like a total druid, you know, a little garden back here. So I made this little druid area if, um, one of the, if they, the rangers want to go there or whatever. And the other important one is the Griffin's Nest. Doesn't that look like a Griffin's Nest? Oops, let me run over. Oh. Um, they look like a Griffin's Nest, and because they're gonna have the Griffins there, so if they want to hire or meet and see them flying around, and maybe they can help with the battle, you know, the siege. Um, so I just, I really wanted this to be something that they really explore a bit more. And there's, this is my little assassin thief that's gonna try to steal from them from this area. So that's kind of how I like to break down towns. I want to make sure that there's actual locations and actual, um, you know, intrigue going on between the different groups and stuff. Um, I think that's all. This is just my Frost Giant Yeti. Yeah, I get all everything kind of on one, you know, one page to use. Um, I don't think I've done. Oh, so in here with the Fire Giants, I'm slowly working on my notes for this whole area, you know. Um, this whole area here, I'm working on the different, you know, kind of what each area is, who, who's there, what their names are. Um, I know I haven't delved into it fully yet, but I've just been taking notes on that. And that's kind of as far as I got. But So that's how I do things. Um, just showing you, you know, is that, do you need to do this much stuff? No, you don't definitely do not have to do this much stuff. Um, I just like to do it because I'm a goofball. And uh, so that's it. That's sort of my... 2.0 Storm King's Thunder 2.0 explanation 
of how I'm doing Storm King's Thunder and I hope that was helpful to you guys and um, so just uh, just enjoy the videos and I enjoy watching other guys videos about stuff about D&D &D stuff so that's why I'm doing mine